Welcome to TradeSpoon. My name is Black Carpel. I'm CEO and founder of TradeSpoon. And today we're going to have our weekly strategy roundtable discussion where we talk about current market conditions, answer any questions you might have. Um, look at the opportunity in the market. We'll talk about the interest rates. For those of you who are new, welcome. If this is your first live event, welcome. Type in first. Always want to welcome new subscribers. Most of you are returning subscribers, but welcome everyone. Uh, the difference between tra trade spoon and maybe some of the other subscriptions out there is that we do two things. One is we're very focused on uh, technology, artificial intelligence, neural networks, building models that give you signals, short term, medium term, long term. Um, and the second is, you know, we use them in our live trading room, right? I have key, we have keys, Scott and myself, we have live trading room every day where we use these signals and uh, explain market conditions. So that's not, that's our kind of unique proposition. And we've been doing this for more years than some of us are willing to admit. Uh, disclosures are very important. Please read them. Uh, trading stock and options involve risk. Not everyone you should, you know, is suitable. Uh, please, if you're new, please read, uh, visit this link so you can understand the risk and suitability associated with trading stock or options and you can always pause the screen if you need more time to read the disclosures but right, before we jump into a trading plan everybody's listening to Powell right everybody's listening to Powell his speech um, let's see how the interest rates are reacting Interest rates are down, right? So we kind of almost to the Monday's low, that Monday, Tuesday low when the carry trade happened. And, uh, you know, we had a pretty sharp sell off in Nikkei and all the asset classes across the globe, right? And interest rates is, is at that level. So the idea, I guess, the summary of Powell's speech is that um, it's time to start lowering interest rates, you know, the risk of uh, you know, recession or rise of unemployment is higher than the risk of returning inflation. Uh, and interest rates are down, right? The two year yield is actually, let's see, we're selling off, 10 year yield is selling off, TLT is revisiting the, this level. So uh, the idea that in September interest rates will be cut, the debate is at 25 basis points, is at 50 basis points. You know, and that's the expectation. Maybe if it's 25 basis points, it's not enough. And Fed is behind the ball, you know, behind the curve. Um, but if they are 50 basis points, you know, then that's appropriate because we do see that the economy is cooling um, off. And then there is debate is, you know, is Fed late and we're going to have some kind of, uh, you know, hard landing or is the Fed maybe a little bit behind, but on time and we, can orchestrate soft landing, right? So that debate continues on. The next, uh, you know, what can influence that debate? Obviously, macroeconomic data, right? Macroeconomic data. Um, you know, new home sales has been very slow, right? That's kind of been the theme. Um, and next uh, week, what do we have? Um, I mean, we have Fed president speak. I don't think it's going to make a big difference. Initial jobless claims, right? That's kind of cool. That got a little bit better. There was a scare, right? It was the unemployment data that in initial claims, jobless claims rising, they kind of pulled back a little bit. So that's positive. If that trend continues, that's positive. Um, and I mean, PC index, I don't think is going to be surprised. So there's not a lot of economic data that I think can move the market. So going into end of August, you know, it's a pattern of kind of sideways, higher highs, higher lows, kind of. We are double top, right? We're at all time high again, you know, 10% down, 10% up in very short period of time. And facing, and market is overbought, right? Market is overbought. Uh, and any kind of, uh, you know, negative news and market sells off, right? So on positive news, it grinds higher. On negative news, you have, because market is overbought, you do have sharp pullbacks. So the question is what to expect next? And the next catalyst that everybody is watching, right, is Nvidia earnings. Next, I think it's Wednesday, Wednesday after the close, Thursday. You know, uh, so 
Next week, the main event is NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA. And last year, NVIDIA, during the same, I mean, delivered good earnings, right? The stock was volatile, right? Its initial reaction was higher, then pulled back, then higher. And then when everybody came back, right, starting the September, the expiration, um, where is this? Friday, September 1. So, right, so 7.15, right. So during the apex, the Friday of the apex, this is when this pullback started to kind of accelerate, came back, and then another leg down. So the question is, you know, is it going to be a repeat of last year where we're going to have, you know, volatile September and October where the market is going to, you know, NVIDIA is going to do this? Right, something like that. Right. I mean, that's one scenario. The other scenario, they're going to, you know, hit a home run and, you know, break out to all time highs. Right. That's scenario number one. This is scenario number two. Or they're going to disappoint you know, and take out the lows. Right. Right. Scenario number three. So those are the three scenarios for NVIDIA. You know, and it's probably the same, you know, same uh, because it's such a big percentage of QQQ semiconductors and spiders. Spiders will kind of follow along, right? Spiders will follow along. Um, so one scenario, right, after NVIDIA or when everybody comes back from vacation, right, we grind in higher, break out, right, scenario number one. Scenario number two, we trade sideways. Right, maybe revisit the lows, maybe come close to the lows. Right, that's scenario number two. And scenario number three, we you know actually take out the five, you know, the the August lows. Right, scenario number three. So those are the three scenarios, right? In terms of positioning, we did see there's a lot of positioning in September, at least in September and 540 and 530. But as we saw, let's look at um, um, Spiders. So looking at the, in terms of where all the positioning, there's a lot of positioning in August 23rd, right? That expires. Uh, not a lot of gamma in 9.20, right? Not a lot of gamma in 9.20 and very little in October 18, right? And in terms of strikes, the highest position is at, you know, where we're trading 560, but the next level is, um, in terms of high open interest, there's 555, 550, and then 540, right? But you can see it's a relatively large, uh, gamma at 550 and 540. So 550, 540 are well positioned, but in terms of total uh, gamma, um, it's not a lot, right? Not a lot, right? And if you look at the Vena, kind of the seeing the same information. So the question is, uh, is it scenario number one, scenario number two, or scenario number three, right? Uh, one, all-time highs, you know, going into September, just because, uh, you know, options expire, that doesn't mean market has to sell off. It usually just creates that window of, of uh, repositioning, right? Everybody has to reposition, and that was negative catalyst that can, you know, cause the market to sell off. Uh, or we pull back. Stay in the range, or three, we take out 
510. As long as we're above 510, right? And even 590, 490 bulls are in charge, right? We've seen it, even 10% pullback is very healthy and bulls step in and right away push the market higher on any positive news. You know, so as long as we're above 510 or 495, bulls are in control, right? If we drop below 495, right? If we take out the April lows, then, you know, then the bears will take over. And that will probably require some kind of negative catalyst to push the market below that, right? So that's scenario number three. So how many of you say scenario number one? How many of you say scenario number two? And how many of you say scenario number three? Andre, Carl, David, Don, Cecile, Kevin, Lewis, Mark, Martin, Michael, Peter, Renata. Renata is back. Welcome back. T, Thomas, Bill. Two, one, one. All right. Anyone else? Who? Okay. So a lot of people say scenario number two. I'm going to go with scenario number two. Right, I'm gonna go with scenario number two. That you know, we're not gonna take out the all-time highs, right? I mean, we can marginally after Nvidia kind of, you know, kind of head fake 570, you know, 565 type of trade, right? But then I think we will have maybe not double bottom, but you know, this level will get retested. Maybe here, maybe here, maybe here. Don't know. Uh, that will depend on the flow of the news, right? Because right now all the good news are already factored in. Right. Yes, Fed is going to lower the interest rate. Yes, Nvidia is going to deliver good earnings. Yes, economy is not falling off the cliff. But you know, any negative news, and then people, you know, you, you know, we could have these exaggerated moves, like we had this VIX move to 64. Right. So market is very uh, kind of vulnerable right now. But you do need negative catalyst. If negative catalyst doesn't come in, then you know then i think we're still trading sideways going basically into this you know into the elections right and september october from seasonality point of view right we always said seasonality i mean you don't make a decision purely in seasonality but from seasonality point of view right this is green line usually there is a august right you have a pullback then you have rebound into september and then after september expiration after september expiration this is where the market is vulnerable and you have sharp pullback to october so that's the risk in the market so this is why i said too i mean there's some signs of concern right gold breaking out right it broke out basically gold broke out to all-time highs right why is gold breaking out to all-time highs if the market is going to break out all to all-time highs another area of concern is bitcoin right bitcoin has been underperforming Right, we have consumer staples, right? Beta versus safety, right? High beta versus low beta. Well, the low beta is leading the market, right? It's XLP that's pushing the market higher. It's utilities pushing the market higher. It's the XLVs, right? It's not Nvidia. It's this, you know, low beta stocks. So that's usually area of concern, right? That means that people are the, the it's a risk off trade. It's a risk off trade, and any event, and you know high beta stocks get, you know, pushed down. Um, that's area, so we talked about gold. I mean, obviously crude oil, right? Despite geopolitical risk, crude oil, sharply lower, right? On fears of recession and lack of demand. So that's the area of concern. Um, what else? I mean, I would keep an eye on Nikkei market, right? That's kind of that sharp sell-off biggest since november 1987 right black friday of 87 uh, but also recovered just like in 1987 <clears throat> and uh, what else uh, on a positive note right the bulls are happy that broadening of the market participation right value stocks continue to grind higher outperforming the market right just like silver so everything that's low beta is up, right? Banks, you know, uh, insurance companies, uh, materials. Um, and then high yield is also continues to go higher and breaking out, right? That's also positive for the market because this is a risk on trade, right? If the high, if the junk bonds rally together with, you know, you know high grade bonds, well, then there is little fear or, probability of recession right so that's those are the positive news in the market this 
you know, off the lows, we were at 14, we're at all time highs, index did jump to 17. I think people are kind of getting ready for September and October, but, um, you know, it's a little bit elevated, obviously a lot less than 64, but, um, you know, higher than, you know, the recent lows in, you know, in July 12th. All right, so what are the opportunities in the market? Um, Let's review some of the trades. So a trade spoon, we offer different services, right? Um, Elite Circle is actually where you can see all of my trades, right? All of the trades. So I, I trade spreads, right? So this is an example of a calendar spread. I trade it as a stock. There was a stock signal, but you can trade it in different ways, right? You can such a sell stock or you can do a calendar spread. So I'm trying to get into a calendar spread on eBay. I close the short leg already, you know, close the stock, close the short leg. I have long put. So I'm waiting for a pullback and then, you know, continue to sell premium against my October position. Uh, OKE was the signal, right? These are the signals that you can find in the active trader, right? Active trader, you have a history. I think uh, yesterday we had um, Apple, right? Apple was on the radar. Uh, today, um, uh, I like Medtronic, right? We traded Medtronic too. So those are short-term signals, right? Those are the short-term signals that are, it's weird, that you can trade, right? There's different ways of trading them, right? You can see Apple is, you know, one of the strongest uh, Magnificent Seven stocks. Medtronic had, uh, you know, good earnings, right? Breaking out. Uh, so <clears throat> these are the active trader signals, and then I trade them in the lead circle, right? Sometimes I trade stock, like in the example of OKE, right? OKE was a good trade, kind of continues to grind higher, right? Some of the oil and gas pipelines today, I think W and B. The signal triggered, right? It's trying to break out, right? So oil and gas pipelines are doing well um what else uh Medtronic. so this is an example of uh, different choices you have as a trader right there are two types of traders right there are traders that look for high probability of success and low return on capital these are the traders that sell out of the money premium, right? One standard deviation, two standard deviation, but they sell, you know, credit put spread, they do um, short puts, right? Or, or, you know, cash secured puts, they sell out of the money call spread. It's a high probability of success, low return on capital, right? So that's just how this, you know, trading works, right? You can create your trade where there is a high probability of success, but then the return on capital will be smaller, right? Or you can create high probability of success, low probability of success, but high return on capital by looking at the, you know some of the tools that we reviewed here, right? Like gamma levels and you know where the positioning is, right? I think we were talking about Medtronic. So large position we saw at 90, right? At 90. Uh, uh, so, and this is why, because of the large position at 90, uh, going into the earnings event, I, so I selected 90 as a short call, right? And long call was 88, right? And I was able to close. I mean, I put on the trade for 42 cents um, and closed it for 50. Um, 20% return, but you know, maximum profit was two dollars, right? If it stayed, if it reached the 90, if Medtronic reached the 90, right? By today, by the expiration, right? And stayed there, it actually reached 89, it got close to 90, but it got rejected at that level, right? 
Uh, but if it stayed at 90, then maximum gain would have been, you know, two dollars. So th these are the type of asymmetrical trades that you can look for. Usually you just buy long calls, but they're expensive, right? Long calls or long puts out of the money, especially in front of the earnings, they're expensive. So that's where most of the probability of success is lower. But if you structure your trade with ratio spreads, right? Some people do ratio spreads, some people do butterflies, right? Or condors then you can create these asymmetrical returns where you know you cannot lose more than 40 cents but you know your profit could be two dollars right so that's an example of some of the trades we do in i do in elite circle right and then keith and uh, scott have you know they're all strategists uh, and this is something that we, you can find in the live trading room, right? Morning bell, closing bell, and or you can watch the recordings, right? You can always watch the recording. Any questions? So that's Active Trader, right? So you can find every day there are signals, WMB, Williams Companies, Metronic, uh, Dropbox. Those are the signals, short-term signals. You can trade stocks, we give you support and resistance. And different choices right if you see pre-market is down then maybe be patient and wait for predicted low based on our model if you see market is up on jackson hall meaning then okay then you can uh, just use the either previous close or whatever the open price is but just be consistent right so that's act that's active trader if you feel more comfortable trading options right we you know we give you a suggestion for either weekly options in the money call right or in the money for bullish positions or monthlies if the weeklies are not available. Any questions on the active trader? Um, Stock forecast toolbox, I think is a great tool. You can enter any symbols, right? And you can analyze them. There's two things that traders need to know right they need to know so main support and resistance levels and they need to know the trend yeah you could look at the charts and analyze the charts and use traditional technical analysis but you want another opinion right from ai right that is not biased to jackson hole meeting or you know rise in unemployment just looking at the price action so spiders today support predicted 556 to be support as high as 570 overhead resistance. We are trading at 562. This is too late. What are we trading at? 560. All right. So we're at 560, right? Um, and the model is doing a good job telling you that if we drop to 556, you probably want to buy. If we rally to 570, you want to sell. And trend is positive, right? Short term trend is positive. So model basically says we could get to you know 570, 570 is high as 575, right? After the NVIDIA earnings and after the Jackson Hole, we could get to 575, or we could, you know, the low, you know, can revisit 558. And it doesn't see anything below 558. Uh, and you can zoom out, right? If you want a long-term prediction, this is getting updated on daily basis. Long-term prediction, six months. We're still in long uptrend. The the low for for Friday, uh, for August was 546. Model did not see any low below 546, but we know we were at 510. So there was a lot of damage done this month to this uptrend, right? And that's why, if you from technical point of view, a lot of Technicians basically says that there's enough damage done to this uptrend where it's on pause, right? It, we're still in the uptrend, but we definitely need some kind of consolidation in September and October to see if is this uptrend going to continue long term or we have some kind of a consolidation sideways market or to the downside. So, you know, I mean, the model did actually a good job that it's this is the range and we're actually trading in this range in August and probably going to finish trading in this range, right? Because 546 is pretty well positioned. Let's just look at that again. But September is different, right? September, October, after the options expiration and everybody comes back from you know vacations you know volume will pick up right and the voting machine will start again right at, in much at much higher volumes
So let's just double check spiders positioning again. So yeah, so 920 September, the largest position is uh, at 540, right? This is where the highest position is at 540. You can see the gamma here. And probably a little bit less at 530 and 520. Uh, but you know, I think till 5:40 we're pretty 5:40 we are pretty well positioned. And once September expires, then October. This is where it's pretty thin right now, right? There's not a lot of position. You know, next level is 5:20. So September expiration is going to be interesting. All right. Uh, so that's active trader signal. These are the some of the trades from elite circle that you see is some example stock trades some example are option trades uh, and you can find these services in elite circle right you can enter your phone number right sms signing you can uh, get closing bell morning bell either recordings or participate live um, if you want to trade stocks only we do have a robo investor portfolio if you want to trade spreads only we have a premium portfolio if you just want to follow the trades and you're not interested in tools like stock forecast toolbox then shadow trader if you do if you are interested in tools like uh, the research where we talked about uh, seasonality you can analyze any stocks for seasonality or probability calculator right spiders based on historical volatility, it will trade between 540, 567. I think it's pretty accurate, right? I think in the next few weeks, I don't expect the break of 540, 544, nor do I see significant upside above 567. So those are the, some of the tools um, and the research you can find. Um, what else? It's an elite circle. Okay, any questions? Bill question mark. Okay. Cecil one election. All right. Good morning, Bob. How are you? Market has reversed for some reason. Market is overbought. The main reason is again, I think that will be the pen. Mar market is not rallying on the good news, right? In theory, Paul actually almost committed. Like I didn't listen very carefully, but from you know, kind of working and listening in the background, you know, he's committed to the rate cut. Right. It's just, you know, nobody knows that the 25 basis points is at 50 basis points, but the, but the differential between the Fed rate and the two year yield is over 100 basis points, right? 130 basis points. So market expects for 100 basis points, rate cuts between now and next, you know, 18 months, right? So that means that, you know, they need to be aggressive. Right, that you know, if they do 25 basis points, people are afraid that by the time they make a meaningful rate cut, you know, you're going to have some uh, liquidity issues, right? Uh, repo and um, you know, um, bond market in general, or distressed debt, or you know, corporate. You know, there's a lot, uh, big uptick in uh, defaults in corporate or commercial real, real estate, right? So something will break, right? Maybe not, you know, 2008 moment, like Lehman moment, but something similar, right? Or companies go under because of the carry trade, right? Bank of Japan says, okay, we're now ready to you know, ra rise, you know, raise interest rate cuts. And then you have a lot of exposure to that carry trade. 
and you have some banks go under, right? So some kind, something like that, right? Will have to kind of spook the market. Uh, but um, uh, so on the good news, market is going to trade sideways, right? Spiders, you know, is going to trade sideways. And obviously, on the, I mean, it's succession low, so it's still kind of at that level. But on the bad news. I think you know you're going to have a much steeper pullback. And today, you know, main beneficiaries are regional banks, right? So your regional banks rally, right? Kind of recovered all of the losses. Small caps recover all of the losses. Um, and you know, silver is up. So anything that's sensitive to interest rates are in strong uptrend. Uh, Nvidia is up. And then let's see what else. Home builders, right? So interest sensitive home builders are you know recovered all the losses, materials recovered all the losses, but they're faced in overhead resistance, right? None of them are breaking out, except maybe value stocks. So the value stocks in general are actually breaking out. So that's positive, right? So the value stocks are pushing higher. Um, banks are doing Better banks of XLF is breaking out. Arc Innovation is up. Regional banks, strong recovery. Airlines recovering. So there's obviously, you know, you can argue the, the bull side, you can argue the bear side, but the default is the soft land lending, right? Majority of the people think that we are in a soft lending scenario. Speech to Palestine, very dovish at once. Yeah, I mean, he's dovish. You can see that interest rates are reacting, right? Interest rate reacting. I mean, the question on people's mind, why are we, you know, why are we down so much, right? On 10 year yield or two year yield, right? Because this was everybody, everybody basically said if 10 year drops below 380, well, that's fear of recession, right? Such a steep pullback. So that's that argument, can, you know, you can still kind of look at it from two different points of view, right? Tale of two cities, there's different views on why the interest rates are, you know, close to Monday's low. Right. Yeah, XLF is breaking out today and dollar even lower, yes. So dollar continues to pull back significantly, uh, oversold, but Nonetheless, is is good for the market, right? We're at 2024 lows. We're basically at 2023 lows, close to the lows. So 100 level is important level. Weak dollar is good for the market, you know, unless it's the scary trade, right? Which is still not clear, right? So we have to look at Japanese yen and we have to look at the Nikkei, right? Because that's where another source of distress can come in, right? If we have another sharp rise in the Japanese yen and sell off in the dollar. Well, that could translate into the equity markets. All right, any other questions? Uh, we talked about trades. We talked, so there's a lot of educational content, right? If you want to learn about iron counters, butterflies, we do have recordings, right? You can always go into these event recordings, uh, type in, you can look at this strategy roundtable, trading group, or workshops. Right, you can type in, you know, calendar spread, you know, and you'll find, you know, webinars on calendar spreads. Now we have short videos. Uh, what else? Uh, we do have a YouTube channel. Please subscribe. We do broadcast live trading room every Wednesday. Um, that's about it. Any other questions? Andre, Bob, Carl, David, Cecil, Kevin, Luis, Mark, Martin, Michael, Fred, Peter, Renata, Jim. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend, and I will see you uh, on Monday morning. Thank you.